Welcome to the Virtual Fracture Clinic, an innovative way of managing acute orthopaedic injuries. My name is Lucy Arnott and I am an extended scope physiotherapist. The Virtual Fracture Clinic has successfully managed thousands of patients using virtual consultations and a shared care approach. Our objective is to provide you with high quality information so that you can best manage your injury and reduce the need of coming into hospital. We have designed this protocol as evidence suggests that patients typically only retain 10% of the information given to them in the traditional clinic setting. We understand that having an injury has a significant impact on your life, so I've designed this video series to explain to you the type of injury that you sustained and to guide you through your rehabilitation and management from the comfort of your own home. Hi, I'm James. I'm an orthopaedic consultant and I regularly manage patients with your type of injury. I'm here to guide you through the details of your injury, the treatment required, and give you your recovery plan. You have sustained a fracture to the outer bone of your ankle, known as the fibula. An example of this is demonstrated now on the screen. This is a common injury, and it will heal itself naturally with the passage of time. There is a small chance that this type of fracture may displace. Therefore, we routinely recommend a repeat weight-bearing x-ray and clinical review at approximately two weeks after the injury. The appointment time should have already been provided to you. This normally takes approximately six weeks. Pain and swelling are present in the early stages and can be present for three to six months. You may need to take painkillers or anti-inflammatories, especially in the early stages. The swelling is often worse at the end of the day and elevating it will help. Guidance on further initial management will be covered by Lucy later. You can walk on your foot as the pain allows but you may find it easier to walk on your heel, especially in the early stages. You will have been provided with a boot. This, however, is for your comfort only and is not needed to aid healing. This should be worn for the first six weeks, after which you can wean yourself into your normal shoes. You may, however, wish to wear the boot if you go for a long walk. We do not routinely follow up patients with this type of injury. If, however, after three months, you're still experiencing significant pain and swelling, then please do not hesitate to contact us for a further consultation. We would also like you to contact us if you're experiencing significant pain or symptoms away from the site of the injury. One of the only things we know that can slow down healing is smoking. If you do smoke, it would be advisable to stop, at least for the duration of the healing process. Further information on how to stop smoking can be found on the NHS Smoke Free website or be obtained from your GP. You can start driving again when you can comfortably perform an emergency stop and use the clutch. Obviously you can't drive if you're still being managed in a boot unless it's your left leg and you've got an automatic car. You can return to work when you feel comfortable and sports can be resumed at six weeks. Bear in mind though that pain and swelling can be ongoing when you resume impact activities. I'm now going to hand you back to Lucy who will guide you through your rehabilitation. We're now going to show you a few exercises which will help you to recover from your lower limb injury. The first phase of your rehabilitation is about managing your swelling and acute pain. A cold pack or frozen peas wrapped in a tea towel can provide short term pain relief and reduce your swelling. Apply this to the sore area for up to 15 minutes every few hours ensuring that the ice is never in direct contact with the skin. Try to rest the foot for the first 24 to 72 hours to allow the early stages of healing to begin. Raise your ankle above the level of your hips to reduce the swelling. It's really important to do range of movement exercises for your ankle to reduce the stiffness and to reduce the risk of developing a blood clot. These simple exercises will help you to move your foot in all of its natural anatomical positions. The first movement is to move your foot in an upwards and downwards position, making sure that you get a stretch at the end of each position. The next exercise is to move your foot from side to side. And the last is to do circular movements with your foot. This can be done in both a clockwise and anti-clockwise position. I would advise to do these exercises for a total of one and a half minutes, approximately four to five times each day. This is the second phase of your rehabilitation, which is where it's really important to regain the full range of movement of your ankle so that you can walk with a normal gait pattern. 
This first exercise is to stretch your foot into an upwards position. Use a towel to loop over your foot close to your toes and then bring the towel towards you to create a stretch in your calf muscle. I would advise to hold this for 30 seconds and then repeat this exercise three times. The second position which your foot can also be stiff is in the toes pointed down position. To provide a stretch for this, you put your toes as far as they will go and use your other foot to gently push down into the stretch. Again, I would advise to hold this for 30 seconds. I would advise to do both of these exercises approximately three to four times a day until you've returned to have full range of movement of your ankle in compared to the other side. The third phase of your rehabilitation is about redeveloping your balancing strategy. Depending on your level of ability before you injured your ankle will depend on where you choose to start these exercises. The first exercises are designed for patients that would not have been able to stand on one leg before they injured their ankle. This next level of exercises are for patients that would have been able to stand on one leg prior to their injury. The first exercise is to hold on to something sturdy and to stand on one leg. I want you to be able to achieve this for 30 seconds without inducing any pain before you progress onto the next level. The next level is to try and remove your hand from the stable object and aim to hold that position balancing for 30 seconds. Once you can easily achieve this, you can then try to do it with your eyes closed. I do warn you that this is a lot more tricky. The first exercise that I would like you to try is to bring your feet as close together as possible. I'd like to do this in a safe environment where you can hold onto something as necessary. Once you can stand in this position for 30 seconds without fear of falling over, I'd like you to try and take your hand away. Once you can stand in this position comfortably for 30 seconds, you can try the next exercise along. Put your hand back on a safe environment and put one foot in front of the other. The aim is to try and hold this position for 30 seconds, making sure you can keep your feet as close together as possible. Remember to do this exercise with both your right and your left foot as the lead foot. This last level of exercises is for patients who really want to return to sporting activities as it really challenges the dynamic control of the ankle which is needed in advanced sports rehab. The first exercise is to use an uneven surface to create a challenging situation. I here have used a pillow which is doubled up. The exercise is simply the same to try and stand on one leg for up to 30 seconds. This will be quite a lot harder than when you did it with your eyes closed or with your eyes open. Once you have achieved this level of exercise to 30 seconds, we would advise you to move on to stage two of the exercises. This stage, we want you to bring your feet into a tandem stance again, bring your hands together and move your hands in a figure of eight position which you can see really challenges your core control of your upper body and lower body. Doing it in both directions will equally challenge you. So that comes to the end of our advanced rehabilitation exercises. It's important to note that exercises such as running and football, which require a lot of dynamic stability, may take a little bit longer for you to be able to return to. It is also quite normal to expect aching of the ankle and slight swelling after doing these exercises. This is purely because the muscles around the ankle have weakened over time with your injury and we're working on strengthening them again. Finally, it is really important to try and put as much weight through your foot as early on as possible. Walking has been shown to increase the rate of healing and reduce the time it takes you to recover from your injury. So try to walk as naturally as possible as early as your pain allows. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any further questions with regards to your injury or your rehabilitation, please do not hesitate to contact us. Because we value your opinion, in the future we may ask you for some patient satisfaction information. We would really appreciate if you could let us know how you found this service so that we can help model it for future patients.